Hi, um, this is just, uh, I'm just going to do a quick video really looking at my um, David Bowie vinyl collection, uh, such as it is at the moment. Um, uh, been into Bowie quite a long time, um, probably since I was about 17, and um, some of the vinyl albums I've had for quite quite some years, probably since the mid-80s, and then others I've got more recently, um, just top the collection up. So I haven't got uh, everything he's done, obviously, but... Um, Got a selection of the, of the, of the what well, I would say was the best album. So these are the ones I've got so far, anyway. Uh, first up is um, the second Bowie album. This is uh, was originally Man of Words, Man of Music, David Bowie, which has been reissued um, after the success of Ziggy Stardust. I think it was 1973. Um, a Space Oddity. Uh, and um, they've obviously got the Ziggy era. Bowie photo on there and on the back. So it's different to the original sleeve, which was a more of a kind of late 60s um, hippie image out there with this curly hair. And it's on the um, RCA label. And um, this one is Dynaflex. I think it might have been a later pressing, maybe from maybe slightly later in the 70s, I'm not quite sure. But it's a, it's a good sounding um, album. And uh, some good stuff on it, of course, Space Oddity, which is obviously a classic. Um, I do love uh, Wild Eyed Boy from Free Cloud, is particularly good. And that was always, a, I think, one that he did really well in concert in the Ziggy era. So Janine's great, Letter Heine. So it's, it's a good album, it's more of a folk rock feel to a lot of it. But um, yeah, good one. Next up, um, Man Who Sold the World. Again, this is the um, the reissue, the post Ziggy reissue, I think, with the different cover. Not the uh, the original cover was when he had the dress on, reclining on it in a on a, on a chair or a chaise longue or a sofa or something. Um, whatever. <laughs> uh, great album. Uh, much more hard rock in its um, musical presentation. Mick Ronson um, featured heavily on guitar and at this point with I think Visconti on bass. And you know, kind of almost like the, the prototype of the, um, the spider sound. It's got the original, not the original, but the sleeve at the time, picture sleeve. And this sounds great. I mean, it's a really, it's a bit knackered, this old vinyl that's on the RCA again. And um, a little bit scratched up, but it plays really well, this one. and. Um, yeah, it's just brilliant. Whip for Circle, I love. One of my favourite Bowie tracks. Title track, Man of the World, is great, obviously. Um, and, you know, it's nice to hear Bowie rocking out a bit. I don't think he ever really rocked out as much, even in the Ziggy era, uh, as he does on this album, particularly on a couple, a couple of tracks, anyway. And, uh, yeah, it's a good one. Uh, Hunky Dory. Um, 1971. I think this is a 1971 pressing. Actually, it's only pressing, so it's on the RCA. Um, a gem production. I do like the, the orange RCA levels are great. Big fan of those. And this is a you know probably one of the great Bowie albums. A lot of people would say it's. One of his best. Um, I wouldn't disagree with that. I mean, changes over pretty things. Life on Mars, probably you know one of the greatest songs he ever wrote. Um, Side two's great. Queen bitch. Bowie Brothers. Or the Bule Brothers, I should say. And um, yeah, you know, dig those trousers on the back. It's great. And I've got um, well, I've got two copies of uh, Z Stardust. I've got this one, which is. 73 pressing, picture sleeve, um, again on the orange label of course, uh, sounds great, it's a bit scuffed up but it's, it plays really well really, Not no skips or anything, um, you know, great record, five years, soul love, it's all good, it's all great, all the way through, probably you know, most most people's favourite, or certainly one of the favourites most people have with Bowie. I think mean, he's really um, 
the ante on this one, I think, with the songwriting and the image it all comes into play. And you know, we've got that Bowie persona really coming across well to be played at maximum volume, which you know, says it on really. Okay. And I got the I did get the uh, the reissue from um, a year two years ago, which. Um, I just felt like it'd be nice to see what they were like, really, the reissues. And this one is, is really good, it's great sounding. Um, it's nice to have a really clean copy of it as well. And they've kind of almost recreated the RCA label. Obviously, you haven't got RCA on it, but you've got a very similar looking label. And it sounds so very nice. Um, sort of on the Parlophone label. Now. So I think they've reissued um, everything up to station to station um, on vinyl uh, and I guess I presume they're going to be doing the Berlin Trilogy a bit later on, maybe this year. Um, Aladdin Sane, I've got quite a beaten up copy of this one, um, it doesn't, it's not the gatefold edition, it may, I don't know if it originally was the gatefold edition, someone's ripped it and then stuck it back together, but it's got a lot of tape around the sides and um, I'm not even sure that's supposed to be green on the back, I don't know what's happened there, some kind of Strange creativity who have owned it before, but um, yeah, so the sleeve isn't great. It does, I've got the um, yeah, there's a little inner lyric sheet there, which is nice, and yeah, the vinyl is kind of in not amazing condition. It plays okay, there's a little bit of um, scratchiness on the first track uh, of side one, but I mean, apart from that, it's not bad. and, and the sound of it is great. I mean, the, I don't know. Just the sound of these Bowie albums on vinyl is. I think he's one of those artists that um, is best appreciated on vinyl. I've got I've got quite a few of those things on the CD, but CDs just never seem to sound as good for but with Bowie compared to other artists. Um, I don't know if that's just the mastering or whatever. But um, Alan Insane. I've got a CD of it, and it sounds absolutely bloody awful. And um, I thought there was something wrong with the CD when I first got it, but you know, hearing the vinyl, even with a bit of scratchiness, is in the, you know, it's a world of difference on the sound. And it's and yeah, it's one of his great albums as well. It's up there with Ziggy Stardust. It's a continuation, I guess, of the that kind of style and persona. Um, I love the title track of Insane, Pretty Star, Gene Genie, of course. And I love uh, Lady Grinning Soul, which is one of my favourite Bowie. I can call it a ballad, I suppose it is a ballad, it's a slow, slow, slow song. Pinups. Um, again, 70s pressing on RCA. I won't get it it's a bit restricted to getting this back in the uh, sleeve, but yeah, I love this album. I think it's really good. A lot of people um, don't seem to be as keen on it. I know it's all cover versions, but I think they're, they're really good, interesting cover versions, and I, I love the Who covers on here. I love. Um, See Emily play, I think it's great. I, mean, I think I heard that before I even heard the usual Pink Floyd one. And, um, you know, it's very good. And Sorrow, it's a great single. Uh, Diamond Dogs, um, which is, this is a, I think an 80s reissue. It's on the, um, the black RCA label now. We're coming into this sort of era. And, uh, yeah, that sounds pretty good. It's not bad. It's not the gatefold sleeve, I'm sure. I wouldn't mind getting that at some point, but, um, you know, it has been reissued recently, and maybe I'll, I'll see what the reviews are like of the reissue, but it's a great album, you know, the sort of apocalyptic kind of Orwellian uh, nightmare realised on this is really good. I mean, I love Diamond Dogs. I love Sweet Thing, a candidate, a brilliant, great performance. Rebel Rebel, um, Big Brother, it's all it's great. You know, he was on great form, Bowie, through, throughout the whole of the 70s. I mean, there's nothing bad about it. David Live, uh, this is the double live album. Um, from 1974, with the gatefold. You can see that properly there. Um, not looking particularly healthy on the cover on the inside at this point, though, but uh, 
it's a good live performance. I think it's it has its detractors, but I think um, it's not bad, you know. And I think uh, there's some interesting versions on here. I mean, he does he does reinterpret some of the older songs in a slightly unusual fashion, but I think it generally works. And it's a good band. I mean, Earl Slick on lead guitar is fantastic throughout. Um, yeah, this is uh, I think this is an original pressing from the. 1974 that I've got. It's again on as usual on the RCA orange label. Um, I picked this up in a charity shop for three pounds, and um, yeah, the guy behind the till was that he was a little bit. Oh, I wish I'd known that was there. But, um, so I was glad to get that. Glad to get that. And, um, yeah, it's good. Next up. Young Americans, uh, one of my favourite Bowie albums. Um, it was kind of one I kind of held up on getting when I first got into Bowie. I, I don't know, I just kind of thought, well, it's solely, I'm not going to enjoy it. But actually, I think he, it's brilliant. You know, it's, uh, again, it's this is a pressing from I think '75 or thereabouts, certainly from the '70s. Um, yeah, I love every track on it really, apart from I'm um, not that keen on the, the Lennon cover, the Beatles cover. Across the Universe is a little bit overwrought, I think. Um, certainly not up there with the original in my view, but uh, every other song on it I love. Um, fame, Win, Fascination, it's just great, got a great feel to it. I think Bowie does, he just gets the soul thing, and it, but he doesn't just do a soul album, it's definitely a Bowie album with that kind of influence, but he makes it his own, and um, yeah, great. Uh, next up, Station Station, another one of my favourites. Um, this is uh, 76 pressing, and the, well, we've seen that label now, we know what it's like. Um, Great, all the songs are great on it. What can you say? It's wonderful. Great cover. Seen from the Man Who Fell to Earth, and yeah, the Thin White Duke era. It's brilliant. And uh, I've got the. This is a new one that I just got this uh, about a week and a half ago. This is the uh, live album from the '76 tour. So it's the Station to Station era tour, uh, live at Nassau Coliseum. It's a double album, um, gatefold sleeve. I've seen that properly. Uh, don't quite know which way to go with the camera. Uh, and this is, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's a great concert. I mean, I think it's on this label here, like this, which is the it's a parlophone label, I suppose. I don't know, give it too much examination. It's a great concert, yeah, he's really on form, the, the band are great, the track list is great, it's a mixture of you know, tracks of Stage Station, you know, Americans going back um, through Diamond Dogs, etc. And uh, I don't know, he sounds in great, I think as, as opposed to David Live, where he sounds a little bit, um, I don't know, on edge, if you like, I think he sounds quite happy and relaxed on this album, there's a little bit of banter and there's, you know, it's... Um, Oh, it's just a good, good, good form, but the only I don't think the, the only downside of this album I think is the recording quality is a little bit leaves a little bit to be desired. I think uh, it's a little bit compressed, almost like a, a bootleg really. But it, I mean, you know, performances are great, and it's, it's worth having if you're a fan. Uh, next up is Low, um, moving into the the Berlin phase, if you want to call that. This was, wasn't recorded in Berlin, it was recorded in France, as I know, but um, it's on the green RCA label, which I think is probably from the late 70s, 80s, early 80s. International. Sounds good. Uh, so I, don't, I think this is probably a slightly later pressing anyway. It's got a different, I think the covers on the back covers are slightly different to the originals. But it's. Um, yeah, wonderful album. Inside one is all the songs, in the sound and vision, always crashing the same car. Side two, you get the wonderful uh, instrumentals with Eno, and um, yeah, they're amazing. And it's just, I don't know, it just stands up so well, this album. It's so, 
you know, for Bowie to go and do an album like this, I think was was pretty brave at the time. You could have easily just kind of kept on making Young Americans from the four or five years, but this is, you know, this definitely has that European influence. This, the <coughs> I suppose the German music influence is kind of creeping in there, and um, yeah, it's beautiful music. I think definitely up there with the Bowie best. Um, next up, Heroes. Um, follow up to Low in Berlin. Um, again, I've got I've just got the one on the, the black label, and um, this one uh, don't quite know the history of it, but it's called Takeoff Heroes, and it has um, the title track. I think it's in French, or some of it's in French. I know he recorded some of it in German as well, and one it on one version, but this one's got kind of about half the song in French, which is slightly odd. But uh, the title song is Heroes. I don't like Heroes quite as much as Low, I have to say. I find it a bit a bit more of a slog. Um, I do love the instrumentals on side two, I think they're, they're definitely brilliant, but I think on side A, not overly fond of Joe the Lion or Blackout. Um, but I do love, obviously, the title track is great. Yeah, it's still a damn fine album. And, um, yeah, great cover, obviously. Then Lodger. I'm not sure if that's the front or I guess that's the back. God, it's good reason. Um, deliberately so, I think. But yeah, I think this is a, a really good album. I mean, I've got Green Label. Um, when I first heard Lodger, which was, you know, 25 years ago or whatever, um, it wasn't instantly that. That taken with it, but it's really grown on me as an album. I think it, I think it, there's a lot of subtlety to it. It doesn't really have any big songs in the same way as the other two, the last two. Uh, Boys Keep Swinging, I think, was a hit, but it's um, sort of more of a minor track compared to the Heroes track. Um, but I think there's a lot of real experimentation on this album, and, and you know, there's beginnings of sort of just bringing African music and you know, just some willfully um, experiments or experimental sort of song structures, which. Um, you know, he kind of moved away from after this record. I don't know. I think maybe Eno took it further with the Talking Head stuff and the David Byrne collaboration. Um, but yeah, it's great. Fantastic Voyage is great. I love um, Red Sails. You know. Brilliant. And then um, Scary Monsters. Um, you know, I bought this one back in. I bought it when it came out. And, 1982, I think. Picture sleeve with the lyrics on. Black vinyl. Um, it's a little bit scuffed up this one. I've had it for a while, but it plays okay. Um, yeah, I like this album, but um, I tend to listen to. I like side one. I suppose side one is the one that has the the hits on. You know, up the hill backwards. The, Title track, Ashes, Ashes, Fashion. Side two is a bit um, not quite as good, in my opinion. I do like Teenage Wildlife a lot, and It's No Game 2 is good. I'm not so keen uh, on the rest of it, but um, yeah, it's still. A lot of people kind of say it's his last really great album. I don't agree with that. Um, there are a few in the 90s, and after that, I think are as good, if not better. Um, and then I've got. Changes one Bowie compilation. Um, I just picked this up cheap years ago. It's just it's a good compilation. It's just got all the sort of the main seventies hits on. It's not a long album. It's just you just throw it on. It's got it's a good listen. I love the cover as well. I mean, you know, how cool is that cover? Brilliant. And then I haven't really got any of the other albums on vinyl as such. I think a lot of them. Uh, I'm not so keen on the eighties stuff. Let's dance tonight. Never let me down. I'm not a fan of that one. Um, and I think uh, you know, I kind of, I kind of get back into Bowie when he gets into the um, Buddha of Suburbia and Outside and Earthling. Um, and those are a little bit hard to find on vinyl, unless oh, well, they have been reissued. To be fair, I think all of them in the last you know year or two. So I would, I would like to get Heathen on vinyl. I mean, that's one of my favourite recent Bowie albums, and. Um, yeah, even the next day, I think, is a good album. I think it would be nice to get that on vinyl at some point, because um, the CD is very 
very compressed, I think. And then you yeah, so the last one I got is of course um, Black Star, which I got um, day of release, and uh, it comes in this. Well, you got the the star shape, obviously, and then the plastic inner, you know, very thick plastic. And I need to be a bit careful actually, it's a bit tricky putting it back in. I've already, I think, stupidly managed to tear it slightly. Um, and then the, the very nice booklet, which is it's got some wonderful images. And um, yeah, I've got, you know, when I bought this, um, I was just so excited that, uh, you know, there was another Bowie album out, and, um, and the fact that it was also, also a great album. And, I'd heard it before it came out, and I got it on the day, and then, you know, the next week he he died, and uh, so it became this whole other thing. And uh, obviously now it's seen as this this last statement, um, which it is. But I'm quite glad I bought it when, when the day it came out, because in a way I had that, you know, I don't associate it just with his death, even though it's got those permutations. I think with some of the songs and lyrics, um, you know, I just. I still have that remembrance of, of having the album, just being excited it was a new Bowie album, and just enjoying it for its um, qualities. But yeah, I'm not going to get that back in the bag. Anyway, so that's it for the moment. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, if I get any new ones, if I do get Heathen on vinyl, I'll, I'll update maybe at some point. But I'm probably going to do um, either Bob Dylan next or The Who. They're the favourites I haven't done yet. So thanks for watching. Okay.